Hey, what's up everyone? Today is Tuesday, which means that it's time for another live Q&A all about dropshipping. As always, I'm your host, Paul J. Lipsky. Here on this channel, we talk about all different ways to make money online. I've been making videos for almost five years now. Originally got started telling you all about what I was doing with eBay dropshipping, which was the first online business that I had tried that actually worked and worked despite not having any experience without having a ton of money to invest and really just being kind of scared to get into the world of making money online and e-commerce. But eBay dropshipping was just such an easy segue in for myself as a beginner. And I know that's the case for a lot of you as well. So if you don't know what the type of dropshipping is that I do, it's a lot different than what a lot of other people on YouTube talk about. What we're doing is primarily uh, dropshipping, actually all we're doing is dropshipping on marketplaces like eBay, because that is where customers already are. You don't have to worry about building a website like you would with Shopify and trying to pay for traffic to visit that website and purchase from you. You're selling on an existing marketplace where there's already a ton of customers who are ready, willing, and able, I guess you could say, to purchase your items because their credit cards are stored on eBay. But when you're selling on your own website like Shopify, that trust doesn't exist. So it's a lot harder to sell with Shopify or on your own website. But on a marketplace, it's, it's a lot simpler because they've already built that trust for you. They're already driving the customers there for you. You don't have to worry about that. And then layer on top of that drop shipping, which is a very simple business model where we are listing up products for sale. And then once those items sell on eBay, then we turn around and then we buy them from our supplier who ships them directly to our customers. So we never have to handle or touch any inventory ourselves. We don't have to uh, you know, coordinate all that beforehand or put in all the money up front to buy that inventory. It's only after someone purchases it, purchases it from us do we actually buy it from our supplier. Now, originally, the suppliers we were using were just other retail websites like Amazon, Walmart, Home Depot.com. But more and more on eBay, we are shifting to wholesale suppliers because that's what's allowed by eBay. That's what eBay wants you to use, wholesale suppliers. So we, we still do both, but wholesale is really the, the safer way to go for that reason. Um, and then we also do this on Facebook Marketplace as well. But on Facebook Marketplace, the retail dropshipping is is allowed. And that is where we do do the, uh, that's the primary focus there, the re retail dropshipping, because it's so simple. It's so streamlined. Like literally, you sell a product on Facebook Marketplace. And then once it sells, you just buy it from like Walmart. And then during the checkout process, enter in the buyer shipping address and then it ships directly to the customer. So it's very, very simple. We have software that helps automate this as well. So eBay and Facebook, I found to be the best marketplaces to do that. Um, and that's what I talk about here on this channel. But I know a lot of you guys have a ton of questions that maybe you don't get find the answers in my videos. So I try my best to come on here and answer those questions for you guys. But make sure to subscribe to the channel. We are closing in slowly towards 100,000 subscribers. I would love for you to be part of the 100K gang. So make sure to subscribe down below and let's get going to 100,000. But let's get to some of these questions now. What is up? Thanks for being here. <clears throat> and excuse me if my voice doesn't sound 100%. I actually have COVID right now, but I'm still showing up for you guys right now and uh, hanging out with you answering questions. Uh, yes, eBay dropshipping is still working. Like I said, uh, it's changed over the years. A lot of people still do the retail. It definitely still works. People are making money with it. Wholesale, I think, is more the the future. I mean, that's where I think things I see things really going. But I think retail is going to be sticking around for a long time as well. So yeah, it still works. Uh, definitely, the strategies from four years ago no longer work now. Like the, that's something you got to be aware of. A lot of people they'll check out YouTube videos. And a lot of the more popular videos, even a lot of my more popular videos are four, 
three, you know, years old. And a lot of the things I talk about in those videos actually don't quite work anymore. So it's really important you stay up to date on what's currently working right now. So all my students in my course, you know, I, they know I update my eBay dropshipping course all the time, you know, a couple times a year. And I'm always putting in the new strategies that work. I just made a major update a couple months ago because things change on eBay. And I said, whoa, okay, we need to adapt to that. Uh, or the software that we use change. So we got to adapt to that. And all those strategies and tactics are, are in there now. So you guys stay up to date on it. But that's very important because uh, things will change. You, you can't expect them to just remain kind of stagnant. You got to stay up with the times. The people that don't adapt to get too comfortable where they don't actually see the results long term. And we're looking for more long term gains here. Hey, what's up? What is up, Steven? Thanks for being here. What is up? Mississippi. Jack the Hack says, is drop shipping on Amazon impossible? It is not impossible, but it is not easy. So I used to teach here on YouTube all about drop shipping on Amazon. Again, it's another one of those things. You check out some of those videos, you might get all excited, but things have changed. Drop shipping on Amazon is not what it used to be. Uh, we used to do the same thing, right? We would find items primarily on walmart.com, list them up for sale on Amazon. And then once they sold, just buy them from Amazon and ship them to the customers we got on Amazon. Uh, no, buy them from Walmart and then ship them to the customers we got on Amazon. Um, it worked really well for a while. A lot of us made a lot of money doing that. But then guess what? Amazon, you know, they started not to like it so much. They made it harder for us drop shippers. And especially new drop shippers, because any new seller really on Amazon has to go through this review process. And if they find out that you're drop shipping during that, uh, it makes it even harder for you. So it's not impossible. You know, a lot of my students who went through my Amazon drop shipping course, which is no longer open for enrollment, um, but a lot of them that went through that are still getting incredible results drop shipping on Amazon. And they message me sometimes and say, hey, Paul, I can't believe you don't drop ship on Amazon anymore. Um, you know, I, I know it got a little tougher, but we're still doing really well with it. And for me, what it came down to, for those of you who don't know, is that I was doing eBay. I was doing, I started doing Facebook marketplace drop shipping. I have this YouTube channel. I have the second YouTube channel. And then I felt like I was doing a lot. I got into crypto as well. So I felt like I was doing a lot and I had to drop one thing. And Amazon was kind of the biggest headache at that time. So I dropped Amazon, um, which for my mental health, I think was a good thing. Although I do kind of uh, get a little bit of FOMO hearing from some of my students who are still doing really well. <clears throat> uh, okay. That I don't know. This one, listing cancellation policy. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Maybe you could send me the exact thing that they sent you um, so I could take a look at it. Um, a listing cancellation, I mean, an order cancellation is one thing, but a listing cancellation, I, I'm, not, I'm not following that. So why that would be an issue for them. So maybe send me exactly what they sent you. You can send it to me on Instagram at Paul J. Lipsky. So that's one of my students. I just want to kind of follow up about that. Okay. Becky says, hey, Paul, I'm interested in doing retail and wholesale drop shipping. Do you suggest I get a second eBay store for wholesale or could I just combine them on my one eBay store? Yeah. So like I said, we do both retail and wholesale. The primary, the real difference is if you're doing retail drop shipping, that's when you're drop shipping from like Walmart onto eBay or from Walmart onto Facebook Marketplace, right? From a retail store, that's where you're getting your items. Wholesale is when you actually get your items from a wholesale supplier. So this requires you to form a business and get a business relationship with that supplier. It sounds scary. It sounds like a big deal. Um, but it's really not that bad to, to get all that set up. And it's well worth it. Um, can you do it under one store? Absolutely. You can have all that running under one eBay store. But, you know, personally, myself, I like having two different stores for that just for sake of organization. We have software as well. 
um, that we only want to, you know, it, it just helps the whole thing stay more organized to have two separate stores for that. But whenever I'm doing something new, like, uh, you know, trying a new supplier, trying wholesale, I just do it under an existing store. I'm not going to set up a new store specifically for that and kind of test the waters. And if I see, hey, that's working, then I will bring it over to a new store. But uh, feel free to do it under the old store at first just to kind of prove it out. And then if it works, okay, then move it over to a new store. <coughs> All right. Steven says, does AutoDS allow virtual assistants to fulfill orders without using your credit card information? Okay. So AutoDS is a software that helps us automate our dropshipping stores or at least semi-automate them. So in the case of eBay, what it can do is, the way that I use it is basically it helps keep track of all the price and stock in uh, stock levels on my suppliers' websites. So if I'm dropshipping from Walmart, uh, let's say it's item number one, two, three. So item number one, two, three, I've listed it on eBay. I plug that item from Walmart into AutoDS. Like literally, I just copy down the Walmart URL, and plug it into AutoDS. Now AutoDS will let me know, hey, that item number one, two, three, it's gone up in price or it's out of stock. That way we can change it on eBay so that we don't sell an item that's out of stock on Walmart or the whose price changed and I wasn't aware of it. So that's kind of one way of using it. Um, with that method, there's no direct direct connection between eBay and AutoDS. So AutoDS actually won't have any of the orders in it, right? Um, it it isn't, isn't able to pull in the order information. The other way to use AutoDS is having a direct connection. Um, it will directly connect with your eBay account using eBay's API. And with that, everything is automated, but eBay will know that you are a uh, dropshipper because you're using dropshipping software. And eBay specifically said that retail dropshipping is not allowed. Um, are people using this full API with no issues? Yes, absolutely. I mean, tons of people are using AutoDS full API with no issues, but I like to at least make it look like I'm following the rules and uh, not give them too many clues about it. So um, yeah, so that's kind of the, the, so with the full API version, then you get the orders in there. But either way, I mean, um, yeah, I'm not, so without using, I mean, AutoDS has nothing to do with that. I mean, if you um, are dropshipping from Amazon, AutoDS can automatically fulfill your orders for you. So you don't even need a virtual assistant for that. But otherwise, the fulfillment process, I mean, they'll have the orders, but there's nothing to do with the credit. They, if Like for another supplier, you would still have to go on the other website like homedepot.com and actually fulfill the order from there um, or your virtual assistant. Do it that way. Like for instance, if you're drop shipping from Walmart, um, Walmart, your Walmart account can actually have your credit card information stored. So you can give your virtual assistant access to your Walmart account and they can log in and fulfill orders and they'll never be able to see your credit card information. So maybe that helps kind of answer your question there. Um, yeah, these virtual assistants or VAs as they're called for shorthand are really valuable for our business because what we do is we hire them from countries like the Philippines and they are able to help us run our businesses because they're fully online. Um, you know, they have computers and internet there. So if we're able to do this online, they're able to do this online as well. And it's a huge, huge help. Um, and with, without that, it's, it's harder, really hard to scale up your businesses, your drop shipping businesses. All right. How do returns work with eBay drop shipping? Um, how's that go if I'm never in possession of the product? Simple. So if you're drop shipping, returns are very simple. I mean, the whole process of drop shipping, you never touch or handle the package or the items at all. So again, someone orders it from you, you buy it from your supplier, whether that's wholesale or retail, 
and then that supplier ships it directly to your customer. Now, if that customer wants to return the item on eBay, that's allowed on Facebook Marketplace is technically not allowed. But if they want to return it, then all you do is you contact the supplier, whether that's retail or wholesale supplier, tell them you want to return the item. And for retail suppliers, <clears throat> they're going to give you a free prepaid return label. Um, they're going to email it to you and then you can just send it to the customer, your customer, and then they'll return it directly to the supplier and supplier refunds you, you refund the customer. And again, you never even touch or handle the item at all. But the items will not come back to you if you set everything up right. Jan wants to know what the best suppliers for Facebook Marketplace are in the UK. Uh, unfortunately, I, I don't have any experience selling in the UK, so I don't know the best suppliers to to use over there. <clears throat> Omar, what's up, man? Hey, Paul, or well, Paul, does the retailer receipt or invoice matter to your customer when you drop ship from retailers onto Facebook Marketplace? Yeah, so this is a very common question that I get. You're drop shipping onto Facebook Marketplace, you know, the customer's on there, they're shopping for something, they buy it, and then all of a sudden it arrives to them in a Walmart box or an Amazon box. The question is, are they going to get upset by that? And the short answer is, they don't get upset. Now, the longer explanation of that is that most suppliers do not include the price in the box anymore. Amazon, you can do gift receipts, that so it won't say anything about the price. Walmart doesn't include the price. Home Depot doesn't include the price. And a lot of other retailers don't. Now, the box does say a lot of times Walmart or Home Depot or Walmart, you know, wh whatever the retailer is. But we have found that customers just don't care for whatever reason. I think my theory is that they just rip open the box or if they see it, there's just kind of this, this expectation. There are so many Amazon boxes floating around that I think a lot of buyers kind of just think that they're reused, right? They think on Facebook Marketplace, they're buying from an individual. And individual people selling on Facebook Marketplace frequently reuse their Amazon boxes to ship items to their customers. And I think that's kind of where the mindset is of the customers on Facebook Marketplace and even other marketplaces as well. So the short answer is customers really don't care if they do care. They'll send us a message. My students have scripts to deal with that, kind of, you know, breaking the tension there and kind of working with the buyer if they complain further. But it rarely, rarely happens, especially on Facebook Marketplace. Whoa, Johnny's in Ecuador. That's awesome. One of my my um one of my OG students, Johnny. <coughs> Donna's saying my my drop shipping on eBay is doing well. You know what that deserves a Oh no, where's my sound effects? Here we go. All right, so where to go? Okay, my drop my eBay drop shipping is doing well. I don't have any traction with Facebook drop shipping. Any ideas on what to do? Uh you know, that, that's hard for me to answer without looking at your store or talking with you further. Um, I don't know when you started, how many products you have, if you're, how well, you know, what you're doing about product research. All those things are important. And uh, without looking, I can't really answer. Um, usually most people that struggle, the biggest struggle I see is that They've either set something up wrong. <laughs> you know, a lot of people just kind of jump into it on their own thinking it's easy to figure out because it, it does look really easy, but they've probably set something up incorrectly. Um, but the second thing that people run into is they're not doing product research right for Facebook Marketplace. So that is what I would really concentrate on. Make sure you're able to master product research and then just add more items. Okay, really just, just keep adding more items. 
All right, Tyler has a great question, very relevant question, because I just discovered something cool about this. So what's up, Tyler? He says, when using a lot of credit to fulfill orders, is there a strategy you use that you're, it's like a tongue twister. Is there a strategy you use so that your utilization isn't so high, which lowers your score? Let's unpack that. So yeah, as drop shippers, we buy a lot of products. As you level up in the drop shipping game, you will buy more and more products for your customers. You're going to be putting a lot of money through your credit cards. This is good. It means business is good. This is good because it means you're racking up points. But as Tyler mentioned, this could actually hurt your credit score <clears throat> because one of the things that affects your credit is what's called your credit utilization. Basically, it's like, let's say you have, um, you only have one credit card and let's say you have no other debt and your one credit card has a limit of $10,000 and every month you put $10,000 on that card. You have 100% utilization. That's not good for your credit score. You want it to be low, okay? So the, yeah, so that's, that's, that's um, one of the things that goes into your credit score. There are ways to kind of fix this, a few ways. The first way is to get more credit, either new credit cards or ask for a, uh, a limit um, raise. Um, that helps, that's, helps a lot if you get that. The second thing uh, that I do is I pay off my cards frequently. About every other day, I go in and pay off all my credit cards because I, I had this problem in the past as well. Um, but paying it off about every two days helps with that for me. Yeah. Maybe once a week for you or once every, you know, twice a month instead of once a month might be enough. Um, the third thing that I just became aware of actually this week is that there are actually some credit cards that don't affect your utilization because you actually don't have a, um, what's it called? A, a limit on your card. So I know Amex has some of these and Capital One just added one of these as well. The Spark, Capital One Spark Plus, I believe it's called, doesn't actually have a, a credit limit on it. So you could just put as much money as you want on it um, and therefore it doesn't affect your utilization, which is pretty cool. I didn't know that. So I don't have that card yet, but I'm definitely going to be looking into it. Johnny says, make sure to hit the thumbs up button because it can cost you if you don't. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. And make sure you guys subscribe because again, we're moving on to 100,000 subscribers. We're going to get there and we're going to have like huge giveaway and everything as soon as it happens. But you guys got to be part of the OG 100K squad in order to win those prizes. Hey, what's up? <clears throat> uh, the, the quick the quick place to look is inventorysource.com. Um, it's not the the best best because everyone kind of knows to search there, but at least get you started. Yeah, there are people doing two thousand dollars a month with eBay drop shipping. Please smash that thumbs up button. <laughs> Matthew, what is up? I was just in New York. That's where I got COVID. <laughs> yeah, Amazon is super strict. <clears throat> All right, Matthew wants to know, what are some of the negatives of eBay dropshipping? Um, some of the negatives of eBay dropshipping... Uh, well, well, one thing that I will say about them, eBay, is that they're not like the easiest company to work with. Um, they change their rules a lot. Um, not change their rules. They, they, um, yeah, I, I could say it like that. They, they change their rules 
where it's like the whole drop shipping thing where it's like totally allowed what we were doing with retail drop shipping. Then all of a sudden they said, you know what? We, we don't really care for that. And then they said, you know what? We don't like that. And now they're like, you know what? We don't mind it so much anymore. It's like, we don't really know what to think with them. They're not very transparent. It's probably a better way of putting it. And they're also just kind of like, their website just is kind of like a little janky and old. Um, those are kind of like some negatives that I don't like about eBay in general um, that I wish they would fix. Like they could they could put some money into fixing their website and making it more modern and just streamlined. It just feels very messy and all over the place. It's an old website and they just built on top of it instead of just redoing the whole thing, which I think would have been a smart way to do it. But what do I know? Um, I kind of talked about how that works already. Um, what is the best way to get money from eBay to be released with Amazon? Yeah, you can't, you can't upload Amazon tracking numbers to eBay. So you have to use other tracking numbers. Uh, AutoDS can do it for you. Um, you just have to set it up right. So I would make sure it's set up right if you're going to do it that right way. <clears throat> Another app about what? Like AutoDS? There are alternatives to AutoDS. AutoDS is the software again, uh, like SkewGrid. SkewGrid is another one, um, but I haven't used that one in a while. That used to be the one I use. That's the one I used to use. Sweet. Matthew says, I've already learned everything from your videos in a month and already at 1400 in profit in two and a half weeks. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. There you go. I mean, someone asked, is it possible? It's possible. There you go. eBay asked me to call them after I created a new account. What do I have to say? They'll they'll ask you some questions. So give them a call and they will ask you some questions. Uh, they just want to make sure you're a real person. They don't want you coming on and creating a fake account and running away with money. Um, so that's they're just going to make sure you're real. Classic says, can you drop ship to your customers on eBay from another eBay listing if the item's out of stock at your regular supplier? Well, as a last resort, you could. The problem with that is, so basically what would happen here is someone ordered this from you and then you go to buy it from Walmart and Walmart's out of stock, but someone else on eBay is selling it. There's a few issues with that few issues with that. So the first thing I would do is check your supplier, check other retail websites, maybe even contact the supplier and say, hey, when is it going to be back in stock? That's what I would do first. The problem with ordering it from another eBay seller is that they might be drop shipping it themselves, which means that you're going to order from them and they're not going to be able to fill the order either. That's the first problem. The second problem is, let's say... They do have the item and they do ship it out. The tracking number they give you, you can't then use on your eBay order because you can't use the same tracking number on eBay twice, even if it's from two different sellers. <coughs> so there are some issues there with that. Um, but as a last resort, you could, you just, you would just need a, a new tracking number for it. Sure, man. That's why I'm here. Where would you get a Filipino? Oh, a Philippine. Oh, a Filipino virtual assistant. Yes. You can hire them from a website called onlinejobs.ph. Um, I think my affiliate link for them is down in the description of my videos. I'm not certain about that, though. Uh, maybe my assistant can uh, let me know. And if it isn't, I will add it because I get this question a lot. But that's where I hire them from. Uh, uh, Aubin says, 
AutoDS isn't notifying me of an item that went out of stock. Um, what's going on? So I would contact them about that. Um, it sounds like that's that's an issue that they would want to be aware of so that they could fix it. Um, and they would also be able to look at your account and let you know if um, if you uh, had everything set up correctly. <clears throat> All right, Ricardo says, <clears throat> uh, sorry, I keep clearing my throat. Like I said, uh, I have COVID right now, so. Ricardo says, hey, Paul, wanted to know how to protect your info when using a virtual assistant through your suppliers and your eBay account. Yeah, so like I said, when, you're, uh, when your virtual assistant logs into your supplier's website, like Walmart, Home Depot, they're not able to see your credit card information. So in my, my virtual assistant course, I go over this much more in depth. But basically, they can just log in, place the orders without ever, without you ever giving them your credit card information. You could also buy gift cards. Like you can just go buy some Walmart gift cards, some Home Depot gift cards, and give them those to fulfill orders with. Um, but at this point, I think the best, the safest way is just to have them log in and fulfill the orders while logged in, and they can't see that information. eBay account, um, you can give them... Uh, limited access to your eBay account. It's not great, that feature on eBay. It's, it's Okay, remember when I said there's things about eBay I don't like? This is one of them. eBay has been promising us for years the ability to let employees log into our eBay account and only have limited access to certain features. That is, that's basic stuff that we should have. Amazon has had that forever. So many other marketplaces have that. And eBay took forever for them to roll it out. And when they did, it sucked. It really doesn't work well. Uh, I, w I wouldn't even recommend trying to mess with it. I just give them access to my eBay account if, um, if it requires that. But you also don't have to give them access to your eBay account at all. I mean, you can just um, give them the orders. You can download the orders and just give it to them and then they can fulfill it. Um, but yeah, it does help to at least have one virtual assistant eventually have access to your eBay account. And I say eventually because, you know, get some trust with them first. Have them gain your trust. Have them work with you for a while. And then if you see, hey, you know, this, this, this VAs are doing well, I trust them, then you can give them the password to your eBay account and, you know, monitor it. But um, yeah, that's the way I would kind of tiptoe into it. <clears throat> Kyrol says, I'm drop shipping from Walmart. And the item is pickup only. That means it was it's not in stock. Okay, so when you're buying items from walmart.com, we go in there right now. You can have items shipped to you or you can have you can go pick up the item meaning you buy it and then you go pick it up from your Walmart store locally. The second one means it's out of stock, okay? It's only in stock if it's available for shipping. That is what you want. And if you if you use the right software and set it up right, that is how it will register. If it says it's shipping, it's in stock. If it says it's pickup only, that means it's out of stock. Again, this is why it's important. This is very deceptive. You know, it, this is a simple process, but all these little things can go wrong if you don't have things set up correctly, which it sounds like is exactly what happened right here. So just make sure you have all that stuff set up so that you don't accidentally sell something and then realize it's actually out of stock. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Hard question, says Jack. Why don't wholesalers just sell on Amazon and eBay and Facebook? So a lot of them actually do sell on Amazon, but very, very few sell on eBay and Facebook Marketplace. eBay and Facebook Marketplace are way, way underrated, undervalued is a better word. And 
the other thing is that for some of these wholesale suppliers, it is actually, in their opinion, not worth it to sell on eBay and Facebook Marketplace. They just don't see the value in it. They don't see uh, for them that it's worth it. But for us little guys, you know, a thousand dollars a month selling this wholesaler's products on Facebook Marketplace is definitely worth it. Whereas for them, if they were doing the same thing, it might not be worth it for them because they have so much overhead uh, in, involved if they were to set up that whole operation. You get what I, I mean? You, you know, our overhead is just so much lower than like a wholesale supplier who would then have to hire a team to do it, right? So it actually is worth it for us. Um, but I think more importantly, eBay and Facebook Marketplace in particular are just way undervalued. Um, so yeah. And then some wholesalers don't sell their products to the public at all. They, they, that's their business model. They just sell in bulk, so to speak, <clears throat> or work with a limited number of sellers. Oops. All right. Good questions. Good questions. My pleasure. Matthew's suggestion is make sure to do the payout. So this is back to the question about credit cards and how to fix the utilization issue. Matthew says, make sure to do the payout before your credit card is due, then make sure to make a payment before it closes for your statement. So interesting, maybe there's a timing thing there that I didn't know about. <clears throat> All right. Alvin says, is there an advantage if I use the Amazon store card to fulfill orders or it should be best to use the credit card? Yeah, so Amazon has two cards. Um, actually, I think they have two credit cards and then a, a different, you know, I haven't looked, I know there's definitely two Amazon credit cards, a prime and a not prime, but I think there's another card as well. Is that what you're talking about? Let me look this up because I use a credit card Amazon Prime credit card. Let's see. Amazon store card. Oh, yeah, the one with Synchrony Bank. Let's see. Is this a credit card? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure what the difference is between the store card and the credit card. I'm not sure if this is a credit card or not. Let's see. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know. With, without looking at it, I haven't looked at it in a while. But uh, from, from, I know the conclusion of my research was that the Amazon Prime Rewards card is the best one because you get 5% back on all your purchases. Um, but... It has been a while since I looked at all their options, so I'm not sure exactly what the disadvantages were about the other ones, but I know in my conclusion, the Amazon Prime Rewards credit card was the best one to get if dropshipping from Amazon. All right, Aaron says, how do you do your product research? Like searching for what's popular. Oh, so down in the description of this video, there's a link to a free eBay dropshipping training. In that training, I go over exactly how I do this. So I would just check that out. Um, I actually show with examples. It's a lot better than me trying to tell you right now about it. So I check that out. All right, maybe just a few more questions because I'm, uh, my voice is getting tired. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people got it recently. Awesome, congratulations. No, you should not get suspended 
just for asking for a limit increase. I don't, I don't know why that would happen. Um, you can try changing your Facebook marketplace location and see if your sales, uh, increase. It's certainly worth a try. Um, yeah, so give it a shot. That's the website for the virtual assistants. Here's a good suggestion by deals by junior. What I've done before for a tracking number is I send a package with a thank you card with the tracking I purchased. All right. <clears throat> um. Uh, can you really find winning products on auto DS or should I use a different product finding way on top of auto DS product finder? Yeah. So auto DS has a, uh, uh, what's it called? A tool in there for product research. If I'm suddenly blanking on the name of it where it will find a product for you, um, based on criteria that you put in. It's, it's pretty good. Um, if you're drop shipping from Amazon, I know people have had success with it. Um, I like doing my product research manually, especially because I use a lot of other suppliers. Um, and for that, I use Zeek Analytics. So I guess it's like semi-manual. Uh, Zeek Analytics will give you a ton of data to help you with product research. And uh, it's just a really powerful tool. And that's my preferred way. That's what I teach all my students how to do. Um, you can just go in, find items that are already popular, and then you know sell those products yourself. I, I think it's just that's the winning sauce right there when it comes to product research. Okay, let's see what else. Ah, okay. Thanks for the clarification. Store card is only for Amazon. It's not a credit card. I'll th yeah, so it's not a credit card. So yeah, I guess there's a good solution, um, but then it's not a credit card. So that, that means you have to have the money up front for the items. Uh, yeah, I mean, credit cards are great because, you know, you could build credit with them. I prefer them. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. All right, so we're gonna end it there today. Um, like I said, I'm losing my voice. So I really appreciate everyone coming out and hanging out and asking such great questions. Normally go a little bit longer, but I'm losing my voice here. Uh, hopefully next week I'll be back up and running and back to normal. Um, in the meantime, if you guys have any questions, just ask in the comment section of any of my videos. Please subscribe to the channel. Let's get to 100K as fast as possible. And I will see you guys next week. Bye for now.